If you have fixed assets in your business, which would be things like cars, equipment, anything that depreciates over time that you wanna put on your balance sheet, you need to keep track of something called depreciation. That depreciation is basically the loss of value over time. And it can be kind of a challenging accounting thing to be able to properly depreciate your assets over their quote unquote useful lives. So this is some accounting jargon for you, but that problem of recording fixed assets and then depreciating them over the time with different depreciation methods has usually been something that people just have to do on an Excel spreadsheet somewhere on a quote unquote made up sub ledger. But now QuickBooks Online has created created a new fixed asset module to help solve for that problem so that we don't have to leave it in Excel anymore. We can actually put it directly in the QuickBooks Online system. And what we can do is have the system do all the recording of the entries for that depreciation. So this might mean nothing to you if you don't have a business that has assets, but if you do have a business that has assets, you know what a pain in the butt this is <laughs> and, and the tracking nightmare that it can become. So what I wanna do today is show you guys the QuickBooks Online fixed asset module. So you can check that out and see if it's worthwhile for you to check it out. And we're gonna get into it. I'm gonna screen share and show you how to actually add assets into the system and show you how the system works, okay? So if that sounds interesting, please stay tuned. If you aren't already subscribed to the channel and you have a small business or you help small businesses and you want to try to figure out how to do better with business finances, that is what this channel is for. So if that sounds good and you'd like to hear more information like this and other things, you can go ahead and subscribe. I would love to have you here as a subscriber. QuickBooks Online just recently put out this fixed asset module. Now, I will say that this is something that is available on the advanced version of the software. Okay, so that's the highest tier of QuickBooks Online. I'm a little disappointed that they only put it with the highest tier, but I think I know why they did, because basically if you have a lot of fixed assets in your business, you are going to be wanting to use this module because it will save you time, okay? So if you are tracking lots of different assets, this can be a nightmare and it, you know, just having it not in the system and trying to rely on these out, outside Excel spreadsheets or Google Sheets or whatever, it can be error prone and getting it all into the QuickBooks system is ideal. So I would say if you're trying to decide whether or not it's worth it for you to upgrade to advanced in order to get this, you definitely want to like uh, look at the time it takes to manage your assets outside the system and see if that could potentially make sense. You know, you might be talking about spending one hour a month might be worthwhile for you to upgrade to the software. Okay, so take a look at that. I just will start with that. Well, let's go ahead and dive into QuickBooks Online. I'm gonna show you guys the screen share, where to find it, and we'll walk through adding some assets and show you what it does. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I am in my accountant version of QuickBooks Online. So this is not exactly what yours is gonna look like, but if you look over here on the side, on the left-hand side, you'll see some things that will look very similar to what you'll be able to see in the accountant view of your QuickBooks Online account. So you should see something, if you do have advanced, you should see something called advanced accounting, and then you'll find fixed assets. So that's the screen that I'm on here. I'm actually in my Clara CFO books right now, so that's why I'm not showing you the dashboard and then drilling down. We're just gonna go directly to this fixed asset screen, okay? All right, let's go ahead and we haven't added anything yet, so let's go ahead and add an asset. We're gonna click on this add an asset button and let's just create something. So we're gonna go and create an asset name. I'm gonna say, let's just create car one is the name of this car or this asset. We're gonna go ahead and put that into a class here. And then let's create, I like that they put a description here so we can actually add like a VIN number. That's really great if you have any type of equipment that has an identification number or you have multiple of the same thing, put your ID number, if it's a VIN ID or some other type of equipment ID, make sure you put it in here because it would just be so much easier when you go to dispose of that asset, which one needs to be disposed of. It will make your recording much, much easier. So definitely check that out. Put in your ID number. And then you want to put in here your purchase price and your purchase price needs to be all in. Like what was all the fees, all the taxes and everything added in here? So let's just say it was 55,555, okay? And we, you want to put your purchase date. So this is being recorded on uh, 
January 20th, so that is why this is defaulting to that. But this might be that maybe you bought it at the beginning of the year on the actual first, or maybe you even bought it, let's do this, uh, December 31st. And then you want to start your depreciation on the same day that the purchase date started. You know, it might be that you purchased something, but then you didn't actually get it into uh, use for a little while. So there might be a little bit of a gap there. So you can talk to your CPA about that if you're not sure whether to do the purchase date on, or the purchase date and the depreciation start date need to be on the same day. It might be that you purchased something, your credit card was charged, but you didn't receive it and have it delivered until 10 to 30 days later or something. In that case, you would wait on a depreciation start date. So that might be why those two dates might be different. And then you'll pick a depreciation method. So if you're not sure which depreciation method to use, please talk to your CPA because um, oftentimes we're gonna be using straight line for most things, but sometimes we like to do double declining depreciation. And then this they have the option of 150% accelerated as well. So these are kind of the top three types of depreciation you will see most often. And as this fixed asset, asset module continues to be developed, they might add other depreciation methods here. Uh, but this is kind of the first round of this tool. So we're just gonna go straight line since that's pretty much the basic and the, the easiest. And then we're gonna say the useful life of this vehicle is seven years. Now, different asset types will have different useful lives for the purposes of the IRS. So you can go and talk to your CPA and say, hey, I bought this piece of equipment. Which category does this need to go into? And the IRS has bands of years that make sense. So for you know small components, computer equipment, it's going to be shorter term, maybe like two to five years, and then vehicles will have a longer life. And then certain heavy equipment might have longer useful life. So they can change over time. So just go and look at the most recent IRS guidelines on that or talk to your CPA and say, hey, I've got this type of equipment. What year should I use for useful life? Now you can always, you know, you can have an argument for a useful life being different. So if you know that like, hey, my computers never last more than two years, you can make the depreciation two years on that. So, you know, those are some things that you can talk to with your CPA about. Okay. And then salvage value. This is if you believe that like at the end of the useful life that there will be a value that you'll be able to get back for that thing. So maybe at the end of this useful life of this car for seven years, we believe that it's going to be worth $15,000. Okay. All right. And then, you know, that too is somewhat subjective, but you can kind of look at the markets and see like how much do cars depreciate over time? Or maybe you know about a type of equipment, you know that, you know, things that are five years old typically are a certain amount. So this is a little bit of a guess in the salvage value. There's not like a, a, a book we can look up salvage value of every single item. So, you know, use an educated guess there. What the salvage value will do is it will take the difference between the purchase price and the salvage value, that amount will be the amount that gets depreciated over the useful life. So a lot of times we actually make the salvage value zero so that we can make sure that uh, the full amount is depreciated over the useful life. So we can just leave the salvage value blank in that case. All right, like if you were, if I do this, I might show you the difference between the depreciation schedule between salvage value and no salvage value. And then what you wanna do is tell QuickBooks where to record this asset that you're putting into the books and also where it needs to put the journal entries for depreciation. So depreciation is a two-part journal entry. There will be a expense amount that goes on your profit and loss statement. And then there will be a part that goes on your balance sheet, which is actually a contra asset. So it goes against your asset account of the, the car that you bought. And then so you'll see like your car and then your accumulated depreciation will be against your car value. So as you expense things over time, it accumulates on the balance sheet. So you'll start to see, you know, one year of depreciation in the first year, and then you'll see that second year of depreciation in the second year, they'll, it'll be adding up on the balance sheet. So we need to map these. And you might not have an account already set up for a new type of equipment. Now, if you have a lot of cars, I recommend just having a car, especially with this new system, a car account, and then put all of your cars under the same asset account. Put these in equipment types or fixed asset types. Don't try to put 
you know, if you have 20 cars, don't make a new asset account for every single car in your balance sheet because it'll make your balance sheet really big and it'll be kind of unnecessary to do that. And because you'll have the schedule of all your assets as listed, you don't need to have that level of detail on the balance sheet, okay? So I went ahead and actually created a fixed asset account called CAR. I would actually change that to call it CARS, <laughs> but I had done this earlier. So we're just gonna go ahead and map that. Now, if I wanted to add a new account, I could do that here. So let's say that I wanted to, let's do, let's do machinery and equipment because I like that. Um, let's say this is equipment. And then we can put any kind of description in here, but we can just save that very easily and we could map that to equipment. Now I'm adding a car, so we're gonna go ahead and map that to car, but it just shows you how easy it is to just add an account if you don't have it already. And then we're gonna go ahead and select our accumulated depreciation account as well. And then here we're gonna go to depreciation expense. You can search that real quick. And we already had that in the chart of accounts. Now, I did not add account numbers to these items when I was setting them up. And my chart of accounts for Claire CFO Group has account numbers. That's why that looks different. So if you're using account numbers, definitely put an account number in when you create these new asset accounts. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and save that. And then it, show, it flipped over to show us the schedule. Okay. And this is what it's saying is the depreciation for the years over the life of this item. And you can expand it so we can see this month by month. It's saying if you're taking this amount and you are taking off the value, depreciating it and expensing that little that that amount over time, you're going to see basically six hundred and sixty one dollars and thirty seven cents every single month. All right, now because we did straight line, it's gonna be the same amount every single month all the way down to zero value, okay? So basically that's just taking seven times 12 months, dividing the total amount and just doing the calculation for you. If you were to change it to something like double declining balance, these numbers would change over time. Um, they, these numbers would not all be different every single, or these numbers would not be the same every single month. Okay, so, that's an example here. I'm going to collapse this again so you can kind of see this. And, and what this is saying is that this is what QuickBooks will record for you. Now that the asset is in there and you have everything set up, you don't have to worry about this again. It's an automated depreciation entry will be posted on January 31st. So let's set it and forget it. So think about how much time you've been fiddling around with an asset schedule and think like, could this be saving you time and money? <laughs> and I bet if you have multiple assets that this will save you time and money, okay? Now, another thing that you can do, well, let's, let's change one thing. Let's go back here to salvage value so you guys can see that and let's save that. It's saying the old schedule will be deleted. Here's the new one. Okay, so now you can see that the depreciation is less than it was before because at the end of that seven year period, we're assuming that this thing is gonna have a $15,000 value, okay? So that's what the salvage value does. It changes the depreciation, a little straight line, 55,000 minus the 15,000, and then take that and divide it by the seven years by months. And that's what your depreciation will be, okay? I think that's pretty straightforward. I like it. Okay, very easy. I mean, the interface is really easy. I mean, this is so much like all the other forms for QuickBooks, so pretty straightforward here. A couple little notes. Useful life is in years, not months. So if you want it to be like six and a half years or something, you know, you'll have to put that in here. I think we can put half years. Oh, only full years to support it. So there we go. You can only do full years. Thank you for letting us know. Now, if you were to do this, let's say this purchase date was the middle of June or the middle of the year, maybe July 1st. And then we would want to start, you have to start the depreciation after the purchase date. Makes sense. So if that's the case, then we would have a half year of depreciation in that first year. And you can see that here. So July 31st. So, you know, I mean, really logical here. There's no, no crazy math or anything, no wizardry happening. <laughs> it's pretty basic. Now, another thing that you can do here is you can add multiple assets. So let's say you already have a depreciation schedule and you're like, hey, I just wanna get this all in QuickBooks. Here's what you can do. 
you can get it uploaded in like a C CSV file. And so you can take all what you already have, populate it into their CSV file format, and then upload it directly here. So that'll save you a lot of time rather than having to do one by one, especially if you have a ton of assets. So what I do have here is I have this example. So let's go back. If you go to import CSV up here on the right hand corner, there's this little hyperlink that says download a sample CSV. So I've already done that. And that's what this file is here. So you, this is giving you an example here. And what you can do here, I did not populate this. This is what came from QuickBooks Online. So you can just copy this format and go through and fill this out with the, your information. And then you can upload this directly to QuickBooks. So I put a couple notes in here for the purchase price. Make sure you include all costs, sales tax fees, et cetera. The depreciation method can be straight line, double declining over 150. And then useful life is in years. So those are just some tips as you upload. Uh, we are not going to do that, but you can upload a bunch at the same time if you need to. And that is it. And then it's automated entries. There's not really any other kind of ways to manage this. That is just, that's the module. And then you'll be able to see all of your assets here and you can view them and look at the schedules and do what you need to do. But really simple. So if this you think will be helpful for you, you do need the QuickBooks Online Advanced version, okay? Now you get a lot of other perks with Advanced, so it might be worth it to upgrade to it if you already you know, might have been thinking about that and you have a lot of assets, this is a perk of that. I would also say if you don't already have Advanced or you don't have QuickBooks Online at all and you're wanting to get into QuickBooks Online, you can use our discount code. So it gives you 30% off for a full year. Now, a lot of this, I think it'll be people who already have QuickBooks and they're just looking to upgrade to advance. Now, I, we can't get you a discount on that unless you have recently signed on with us on QuickBooks and then just email us at hello at claracfo.com and we can see what we can do with our QuickBooks contacts. But yeah, if you already have QuickBooks and you've had it for a long time, we can't get you that discount into the into the advanced product. I'm sorry, I wish we could, <laughs> but we can't. That's it. Let me know if you have any questions. If you're using this already, tell me in the comments section below. Tell me if it's been helpful. And then uh, let me know if you have any other questions about fixed assets in QuickBooks Online. All right. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody.